as Deputy Director General for Research and Development at the International Potato Center, it is um, an honor to give some words to acknowledge the contribution of Bob Rhodes to SIP's work. I would like to thank Doug Horton for helping me with this content. Historically, agricultural research organizations have been using exclusively quantitative research methods. However, Bob emphasized the value of qualitative or informal research methods. Farmer back to farmer, a model for generating acceptable agricultural technology. This widely cited paper inspired future interdisciplinary and participatory research work, not only at SIP and other CGIR centers, but more broadly in the international agricultural community. As you can see, SIP social and biophysical sciences that work today in teams and sometimes take that for granted, myself included, who has worked in multidisciplinary teams for many years, own gratitude to Bob Rhodes' ideas. Thank you very much, Bob, for your contribution to agricultural research and development approaches. Your ideas are still present and evolving today. Hi everyone, on behalf of SIP Social Science team, I'm going to present Bob's legacy. The first legacy is interdisciplinary collaboration known as farmer back to farmer approach. Before, there were highly visible failures of post-harvest specialists viewing the problem from their scientific perspective and proposing long storages not suitable to farmers. Bob introduced interdisciplinary collaboration, incorporating farmers' concerns about cost and risks of communal and commercial storage, providing feasible solutions for farmers. At that time, however, women farmers were less recognized in research, practices, and publications. Currently, we are more gender responsive. For example, we introduced Sweet potato storage is in Africa. There are two types, the pit storage and hot storage. Do you know which one do women farmers like and why? Women prefer the pit storage because they can make it by themselves. To build hut, they need their husband's financial and physical labor support. And then women's sweet potatoes may be taken by their husband. Ship. Anthropologists also work with women farmers to adjust equipment or develop a new design based on women's needs. Participatory approaches are applied in various areas with continuous revisions to critically address the issue of power. For example, farmer field schools, participatory variety selection, participatory market chain approach, and nutrition education. The next legacy is genetic resources. Before, the conservation of crop genetic resources were based on breeder's value, in which quantity was important. Farmers in the Andes purposefully maintain a diversity of cultivars. They select for qualities as well as quantities that are beneficial for small holder conditions. Dynamic conservation is the outcome of farmer management for diverse trait, culinary quality, risk management, among others. Indigenous knowledge and global sciences are often seen as two distinct epistemologies. Bob stood between and created fusion by using farmer's knowledge and the latest sciences. Another of Bob's legacies was a focus on households and food systems. During the growth of international agricultural research, during the Green Revolution uh, and after that, there was a strong focus on crops, potato crops, rice crops, maize crops, and especially on the new crop varieties that biophysical sciences were developing at that time. When the scientists talked about farmers, they were usually talking about the male farmer and thinking that the job of the male farmer was to adopt the new varieties uh, to improve productivity. Bob wanted a different approach. 
he proposed interdisciplinary collaboration between the biophysical scientists with a focus on the crops and the social scientists in order to see things differently. He proposed the idea of looking at the whole system of the food system, focused staple foods, but also on the complementary foods, the way that these interacted in the intercropping systems. Also on other production um, methods like home gardens and the interconnections with livestock through the use of, uh, of manure on the crops and also feed from the byproducts of crops to the animals. This system produced for the market to bring income to uh, households, but of course also was a source of food for that household. The production of food involves uh, work in the fields, harvesting, it involves storage, selling to the market, and preparing the food for the family. This involves the, the women, the men, the old and the young. When research supports the whole food system in this way, it becomes more inclusive, it becomes more productive, and it becomes more nutritious. Many physical scientists were very happy with this alternative approach. The role of anthropologists are expanding in SIP now. We look at the issue of access to resources, social and ecological feasibility, and institutional power dynamics that determine scaling up of technologies. Now, in this last slide, we raise questions to build further on both trajectory. What is the role of disciplinary non-economic social sciences compared with interdisciplinary research? How can gender responsive and identity sensitive participatory research contribute to SIP's core research compared to orthodox participatory research in the 1990s? How can we apply both concepts in emerging hot topics in agriculture? in terms of interdisciplinary collaboration and research concept. Thank you both. SIP will continue to work for women and men farmers across the world.